All right. Well, I'd like to officially welcome you to From Task to Finish, Using Your Brain for Year End Success. My name is Shelly Hayduck, and I'm co-hosting today's event with Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, congratulate yourself. You're here because you are productive and efficient, and you want to take that into the new year with you. So we've got some really great features to share with you uh, to help you stay on track, on task, and get those uh, those jobs completed that are out there lurking within the uh, the brain that you've created. Right. And the interesting thing about this particular particular topic, it's kind of um, interesting to debate how much of it is theory and our own mental state versus the tool that you use. So we're going to kind of intersect and start a little bit, uh, uh, focusing a little bit on um, getting things done methodology, time management methodologies, tools that will help you, and then um, and then pivot into sort of the nitty gritty um, the ground level of like creating a master task li list in your brain using thought types. So I'm going to start um, with some of that theory and the whole idea and premise behind tools for thought and the brain software um, and why it fits so nicely into task management is it's kind of all about getting it out of your head and into a trusted place. Um, so, you know, if you want to be cynical, you could be like, well, why, like, why do you need to do that? I've got it all here. Well, there's a couple of reasons because once it's in a, 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 an external brain, your second brain, um, you can act on it in a way, um, and actually move forward with staying in the present. So a lot of this, uh, when we talk about prioritization, when we talk about your lists, when we th talk about your project types and tags is really to put you in control. So rather than responding to every single call or um, meeting or task that just sort of the world throws at you, you're going to turn this around and put all these things that are in your head and coming at you in your brain so that you can control them, so that you can decide what do, what do you need to get done for this year? Maybe what's going to change? Um, maybe you're going to defer some stuff to Q1. Maybe you're going to delegate it to you know somebody else, a trusted colleague or spouse. Um, and that's all good, but you're going to become explicitly conscious. And then you can actually review your workflows, your items, and continue to evolve that process visually with the brain. So um, just in terms of what we're talking about, since we're focusing in on year end success, I thought it would make sense to start off by just kind of talking about goal directed thinking, because I know everyone likes to talk about New Year resolutions in January, but as we're kind of getting to um, the end of this year, like I'm already thinking, wow, what's my new, um, you know, marketing program? What's my new, uh, my daughter's new educational uh, program going to look like? So as we're ending the year, we've we've clearly got ideas for not only how we finish what we're doing, but how to get started. So that's where um, goal setting as well as completing old goals can come in as thoughts in your brain. And um, the way you'd want to do that is really think about and use the thoughts to define success, whatever that success would be. Would be. Um, I think the the old adage and saying goes, a dream without a plan is, is just a dream. And that's where here, um, if you have target metrics um, that you're trying to hit, maybe as a salesperson, um, if you have different um, comps as a designer, um, this is where you want to come into your brain and keep in mind uh, as we've mentioned, um, you know, in the webinar write up, this can be done as an individual, but this is a great exercise for year end or beginning year for you to do as your team to share this brain and literally brainstorm any thoughts or put any kind of cool ideas or success success benchmarks that you want in this particular brain. And then this this actually sounds interesting, and some of you might be on this in, in different projects in your brain then you might want to think about the obstacles. What is holding you back? Certain projects, you might be uh, trying to sec secure funding for a new company that you want to start. Or maybe you've got this great idea for 
a brand new technology you want to bring in-house, but you're waiting for management approval. So these are things that you can go ahead and put in your brain. And then keep in mind, it's not just a static physio diagram of kind of what you have to do. This is where you can actually take notes, drag documents, and actually start working on the nitty gritty. So here, if I need to obtain management approval, maybe I'll make a note that, um, you know, I'm going to take, I'll just say, you know, Sally to lunch. So I'm waiting for Sally's approval. She's not 100% on this idea. You know, you know, I'm going to make a note here. What am I going to do? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Let's book that lunch date. Let's, let's go out for sushi or whatever. So these are the kind of things that um, when you have an obstacle or you have a goal, get your ideas for how to solve that coming in this area. And if there's a lot of complicated things, they can also be listed as thoughts. And then of course, project planning. Um, and this is where we can actually visualize various phases of a project. Um, we have different methodologies. You can organize by week. You can organize by action items. Um, we have different theory theorists. I absolutely love David Allen's getting things done methodology. And he has a natural planning model, uh, very similar to what we're talking about with goals, where you define your project's purpose, your mission, then you do brainstorming to, uh, you know, secure that goal and the next action item. So that's sort of one way to do it in project planning. And I'll show you a couple other project planning. So you can actually visualize phases as thoughts and then connect all relevant documentation. And then um, number four, um, depending on where you are and what you need to get done and how complicated it is, because sometimes it's just a task like, you know, and Matt will cover the sort of the bulleted um, ground level tasks, then you can just cross things off. But if it's a little more complicated, you might need references and inspirations. What is this new technology that we're designing going to look like? Um, I'm working on a house renovation. I want to see some examples of, you know, kitchen cabinets. So building the knowledge base of references to complete your goal all is is actually very powerful in the brain. So you can kind of, as you're, you know, stuck on a goal or an obstacle, you can come to this area and really kind of have your eye on the prize and look forward. And then alliances. This is a thought I absolutely love. Um, this is great for students, for people who are transitioning in the industry. Um, I love to really link up colleagues that share similar vision. Um, you know, a lot of people will have, obviously, their team... Uh, their uh, colleagues mapped out in the brain so they can actually defer and delegate um, family and friends. This can also be industry associations. Um, just if you're a student, teachers and different academic uh, leadership that you you might be following in terms of maybe getting your PhD thesis done. So this is this is a nice area that sometimes gets overlooked where it's not just immediate people who are in your, your workflow system, but people who can bring uh, an additional level of insight. So I like to have those as step five. And then finally, when that project is done, outcomes and lessons learned. This is absolutely wonderful, especially, you know, if you're in sales or marketing, there's, there's quite a cyclical element, uh, even though you're doing things with new products, new customers, um, you know, you might do the same conferences every year in Q3, for instance. So having those lessons learned and those completed pro projects there will remind you, OK, well, this year we're going to start earlier. Or this year we're going to streamline the budget and really focus on, um, you know, just a few of our customers. You know, that kind of thing is um, where you build. And there's no limit. So there's no limit on how many projects or thoughts. So now that's kind of the theory. Um, I just want to kind of, I, we mentioned, just get, uh, just bow down to some of the uh, great task management and uh, methodologies and thinkers that, that I particularly love. You could actually use AI to create a whole new category. And of course, on X, formerly known as Twitter, there's a lot of new sort of gurus out, out there too. So those guys can all go in here. Um, but of course, David Allen kind of got this started, gosh, maybe like 20 years ago with his uh, infamous book, Getting Things Done. So um, the whole idea and premise 
is to get those ideas out of your head and into a system. Uh, David Allen is actually a brain user and he's got some amazing books if you're not familiar with David Allen, um, but you can actually visualize that complete methodology. Um, now, as we get into sort of the grind of, of what we're doing, and this is, this is kind of important for year end to think about, um, David Allen represents things as horizons of focus. So horizons of focus are really just altitudes of what, what's going on in your life from runway, which is kind of what a lot of us are on before the holiday season, where we're just, you know, literally trying to get off the ground, trying to get things done. And then uh, there's a hundred, 10,000 foot uh, view. That's your current projects. And then you get into very interesting things like, uh, 20,000 foot areas of responsibility, um, your 30,000 foot horizon of focus, which is your one to two year goals, um, and then 40,000 feet. And then, of course, the 50,000 foot life goal. So this is this is where if you're trying to set priorities and you've got a lot of stuff in runway, you might want to look at which projects are actually going to affect your life goal. So maybe you're spending a lot of time you know, on a neighbor's project, but really you need to be looking at, you know, how to take care of an aging parent, which is more in terms of a life goal you have. So these are the things that you can kind of cash out in your brain. Um, another theorist that I uh, really like as well, and there, there are different versions of this matrix. It's a great matrix for thought typing, which we'll show you, is Stephen Covey, First Things First Urgency Matrix. Um, where basically you can have uh, something that's not urgent, but important. Like you want to make sure you're, you're in good health. It's not urgent. You're not going to the ICU or emergency, but at the same time, you know, something you need to do. Um, not urgent, but, and not important. Those are just things like you might want to, I don't know, get your car detailed. So that's going on a, 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 a like not urgent list, but like, you know, if you have the time, it's a nice thing to do. It'll make you feel good, you know, not urgent, not important. And then urgent and important are the things that obviously you want to focus on. So, you know, you've got that leaky faucet or you need to get a doctor's note for travel, you know, these types of things. Um, and then not urgent, but important things that can wait, but you may not want to put off because they're very important to maybe the long term growth of your company. So these can actually all be represented as thought tags and types. So now what I want to do is actually go to a, a more filled out brain so you can actually see um, kind of where the theory meets the thoughts so to speak, in your brain. So in this particular example, um, you know, I've still got David Allen's project planning model, and I've also got a new model for my IT implementation phases. So um, very similar in that we go from planning to resource gathering. Um, and in this case, I can have the relevant documentation attached to each phase. And, you know, I can continue to add people and see how this particular project rolls itself out. Now, the way I like to kind of organize things is I like to create project types. So here are some examples of project types. And what a type is, is it just lets you kind of communicate the status of a project, because I'm sure a lot of you don't just have a single project you're working on. And some of these projects might be completed. So uh, that can get a top type. They might be green lighted, which I like to think of as my active projects. Sometimes you have something called a hot project that's just like really extremely important. And then you might have something else called stall. So you can actually, if you have a new project that you're working on, for instance, so I'm just going to create a uh, new marketing project here. I can come in and then I can actually decide, I can, you know, set that up or I can go ahead and just create a type for that particular project and decide. So in this case, I'm just gonna set it up as a green lighted project. So now all of my green lighted projects are gonna appear in this area. So if I need to know which projects are taking off in my company, um, I just go to this particular thought and they're all here. I've got my new uh, 
Delta project, my alpha and my new marketing project. And then likewise, I have a set of tags that can be quite interesting for tagging things like um, I'm going to move to yet another a brain. If I can just uh, go to is kind of blocking my brain view here. So let me go to my thinking nexus brain so you can kind of see how tags come into effect. So this is a larger brain that I have where um, this has a little bit more of what's going on. So you can see my active thought, my active projects, I actually kind of have merged active projects and the 10,000 foot view that David Allen likes to talk about. Um, I've got all kinds of things happening and uh, I can go ahead and uh, click on any of, of these projects and see what's going on. I might have past references. So actually there's gonna be a new company brochure, but there was an older company brochure where I kind of liked some of the content. So, you know, I've got that. You can connect it to people and uh, then you can see what these people are also working on. Uh, and that takes you to a whole other area in your brain. So in this particular example, for my meeting management area, I've got different meetings and you can actually go ahead and tag different thoughts with different status. So if we're actually looking at uh, hiring a new web design firm, I can actually come in here and set the thought type. Maybe the thought type is now this is a critical project. So that actually changes where this is in my view of information. And actually this VoIP service review, I'm gonna do some editing at the same time. I'm gonna forget that because that's something like from 2015, I do not need that anymore. And now you can see how things are coming together and uh, really looking good. Um, the other thing I love is I actually have a thought type for my action items. This is particularly nice when I'm in a meeting and I just wanna create a, a nice color and icon to let me know what I have to do. And of course, if I wanna go ahead and look at that particular thought, let me just go ahead and... Uh, and I have a lot of thought types in this brain because I use it for a number of different examples, but I'm just going to click on that and that clears the deck kind of. So I can see everything that's sort of in my lap um, as a new action item for me. And from there, I can go ahead and see, you know, maybe I want to defer it to somebody else or grow it. And then likewise for tags. Tags is another way in addition to thought structure. Uh, and Matt's going to get into sort of the nitty gritty of how to create and manage your tags. But um, I love tags for time frame. So stuff that might I need to do within a two month time frame, maybe deadline, I can go ahead and click on that tag and everything's popping up here. This is everything that I need to do in my six month time frame. And then of course, another tag that I absolutely love is cost, costing things out. So if I have, uh, you know, my department gets more funding in Q1 or we've got some extra funding I wanna use this year, I'm gonna click on high investment and I'm gonna see, okay, cool. This is kind of um, what I'm interested in doing, uh, creating a new team um, with that extra money or, or that sort of thing. And then um, if you have people that you are waiting for a lot, Waiting for tags are also really great because you don't have to keep reminding yourself, um, you know, talk to them about these kinds of things. You can create a note under their name or actually have a nice waiting for when I'm talking to the CEO. So this is just to kind of give you an, a higher level overview of how um, you can actually go ahead and control and set your own priorities by visualizing all your open loops to really um, take control of the information and all these projects rather than having them sort of control your day. Um, but with that, I think I'm going to pass presenter over to you, Matt. Wonderful. I am going to share my screen. Let me know if you can see this on your end. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice Okay, background. fantastic. Very nice. And Right off the bat, I want to thank uh, a couple of people who have been writing in uh, with some great questions, and we will get to these questions at the end of the demo. Manfred was paying particularly close attention and noticed that our uh, Shelly and I are in our brain, our tabs for each brain we have open look a little bit different. That is because Shelly and I are demoing in version 14. It's available in beta. So you can go to thebrain.com forward slash thebrain14 and download a copy of version 14 beta. We're demoing in 14 today just because um, we love it so much, number one, but also number two, I'm showing you some specific features 
uh, the AI that we've mentioned that are integrated into version 14. So I'll get into AI in just a bit, but that's the difference in the tabs. There's new tab settings. There's a lot of great new features, more information on that, uh, the Brain 14 page for you. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in to start talking about uh, how I can use in a real brain uh, some of these features that Shelly has has highlighted for us. First and foremost, you know, Shelly talked about these different methodologies that are available uh, to create. And I think Gary had the question, of, like, should I use these for each one of my projects? This really goes to show the flexibility of the brain. And Shelly shared with us uh, the Stephen Covey method of, you know, the urgency matrix, the uh, getting things done methodology. Is it something that's 50,000 feet, 10,000 feet, or is this a project that's sitting on the runway? You need to address it right now. Um, uh, those are just different options that you have. Maybe you follow Six Sigma. Uh, Six Sigma has, they really kind of simplify everything to just having three different categories for project management. Is it something that you are planning? Are you then, then you move into scheduling and then you move into control. Um, they don't call it execution or anything like that. They call it controlling the project. And then I've added my own fourth category, which is closing it out. So you control a project until it's completed and you close it out or archives. We'll be talking about that as well. And you can utilize these methodologies or whatever methodology you like in many different ways. And so that's what I'm going to share with you now. I've got a brain that's open. This brain actually started out as um, a real architectural firm uh, that utilizes the brain for keep track, keeping track of all the moving parts. They've got clients, they've got engineers and contractors that they work with. They've got deadlines, they've got all types of different projects. So obviously I've changed the names and, and information in this particular brain, but it's really a great example. You can use the brain for any type of data that you're collecting and managing. And um, uh, it's up to you how you want to store and access it through a brain database. So here I am in my Howard Partners Incorporated brain, and I'm going to right away just go right down to my different projects. Um, and as you can see, I've got looks like eight different projects that I'm working on right now. And each one of these thoughts down below has all the people that are working, the contracts and, and uh, that are going on and, and scheduling commitments and, and notes on this project and so forth. But notice that right off the bat, there are a couple of color coded thoughts. I've got blue text thoughts. And when I hover over, I just see that that is a client. That's because I'm keeping track of clients engineers, um, uh, different types of contractors, whether they're an electrician or a plumber and so forth. Um, so I've got all different types of, of people and, and uh, projects that I'm managing. And these are quite simply a client. Fountainhead is a client of mine. We're working on the Fountainhead project. Uh, the Villa House, um, you know, they are our clients. We're, we're updating their house. Notice I've got two that don't have any thought type. So I'm going to now apply a thought type. And a thought type is just a classification of a thought uh, that doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't clutter the, uh, the brain in any way um, with adding extra additional, uh, you know, links to the thought. Sears is a client, but I don't see it falling under client unless I want it to. You can turn on and off that particular feature. But I like to just be able to look at a thought and just visually identify or hover over that thought and get that hint that that is a client. But I've got two down below that are not classified yet. So I'm actually going to go to my thought type list and you can create as many different thought types as you'd like. And there you can see I've got a VIP thought type. So I'm going to go down to Swanson and I'm just going to categorize the Swanson house as a VIP. What constitutes a VIP in my book? It it's you know it's really all up to you um, um, how you want to categorize or what thought types that you you want to create. And when I hover over, I see it's a VIP, but it's still showing up in that blue text. So I'm actually going to modify what VIP thoughts look like in the brain if they don't already have an icon associated with them. Um, then they'll inherit the icon that you apply to a thought type but they will also inherit the color. So you can see it has a little bit of a yellow background, whereas clients just have blue. And if I want to change the, I'm just going to click, open up the thought properties and say my VIPs have 
uh, green text. I'll go sort of a dark green text there, yellow background. So now when I'm looking at all my different projects, I can visually see that uh, I've got a, a VIP here. And if I want to make the breaks, another VIP client as well. So I'm going to alt click on that particular thought. That also opens up the thought properties and we'll make this a VIP client. Now notice also that my thought types, and you'll see this in my thought tags as well, um, they are nested. I've got subcategories. Um, and that's so when I do a report, show me all of my clients, my VIPs will show up there as well. Or if I want to say, show me just my VIPs, um, I get VIPs and any other subcategories down below. So when you create a new thought type, let's say I don't have a thought type for plumbers and I just want to create a new thought type for a plumber. And again, I can click to open up the thought properties. I can assign a thought icon. All of my plumbers will have, I'll do a search for water. We've got over uh, 2000 different um, thought type icons that you can use. You can also upload your own images as well. So now when I go to all of the different contractors that I work with, let's go to my home thought and go down to contractors. Uh, Phil hasn't been classified yet. Phil is a plumber. I am going to alt click and assign Phil that thought type. He is a plumber and I want plumber to fall under my people category. So I'll apply that thought type and I'm going to navigate over to the plumber thought and make this a child thought of people. Is it people? Let me see what it was. It was person. So I want to have that under person. There we go. So these are all my different people thought types or person thought types. Client has a subcategory of VIP as well. And again, when I go back to viewing all of my different projects, or in this case, all of the different contractors that I work with, look at that visual cue. I know that Betty is my photographer. She photographs all the work I do, interior and exterior on projects and so forth. Uh, Wendy is one of my several different electricians that I can call to, uh, to work on a job. So I get that nice visual cue. Thought types, a great way to add extra context to the information that you're working on, rather than just looking at, in this case, a list of all the different projects. Now I know which project or which client are my VIP clients. I might want to, if I'm just doing a daily review of all my projects, I know which two I want to click on first, Swanson and the Breaks, uh, because those are some of my VIP clients. Also, we have thought tags, and thought tags is where I like to utilize uh, those methodologies. Shelley mentioned earlier the GTD, the Stephen Covey uh, urgency matrix. I utilize the um, uh, the Six Sigma, you know, those three easy steps, and those are in tags. Is it something that you're planning? Is it something that you're scheduling? Have you moved on to the control uh, of that project? And then I've added my own closing it out. Uh, once that project is done, and in my world of being an architect, once the project is done, it's done. I'm going to archive that. I'm going to mark it as closed. And once again, with the icons that I've applied, I can just look at all my projects and see that I have got a lot of projects that are currently in planning. Uh, two of them are VIPs that I'm planning out. So that again, it just gives me greater context of that information. Uh, I'm still controlling the Villa House project and Sears, I've archived that out. So I can actually move that Sears thought. I'm jumping a little bit ahead here, but I wanna move this Sears house over to my portfolio. I don't delete data from my brain, I archive it. I move it into another category. I wanna keep track of all the projects, all the lessons learned of project management uh, over the years. And in this case, you know, I might wanna use Sears as a reference in the future, show some people that, you know, what we did with this particular house uh, in my portfolio. So I've linked it, I just simply click and drag, drag a link to another thought. Here, I'm gonna right click and unlink it. I can also just go to the Sears house thought, click and drag and start typing in portfolio. There it is, it shows up in my list, I double click. So several different ways to move a thought to a different area of your brain. It is no longer 
an active project that I'm working on. So I don't want to link there. I'm going to right click and unlink. So, um, and this is an older Sears house that's been remodeled. So it also falls under the category of, you know, things that influence me as an artist or as an architect. Uh, I've got this house being referenced in different areas of my brain. And now it's classified as one of, and in that in this case, my first portfolio uh, item. And I can go right back to my projects and stay on track. Let's talk about those thought, uh, those thought types. Another feature that I like about um, the, or the a difference between thought types and thought tags and what I like about tags is that you can apply more than one. Think of thought tags as attributes to a particular thought. Um, yes, it is a, um, they're a VIP project or a VIP client rather. They're always gonna be a VIP project. Currently it's in the planning stage, but also I've got really high hopes for this. And I think we are gonna be using the Swanson House as sort of a press reference in the future. Uh, so I wanna keep track of all the jobs uh, that I've worked on or I'm, I'm attributed to or, or have influenced in some way as being my press references for my own career, for my own job or my business. So I'm gonna create a new thought tag simply called reference. And I'll click to create a new tag. And again, I can click on that tag to change its attributes. Do I want an icon associated with it, color and so forth? So yes, I'll grab an icon. So I'll select a stock icon and press reference. I think of newspaper. So I'll type in news, news. Uh, we'll just use this little icon here, paper. So once again, I can go back to any thought, my Sears house, here's my projects. Uh, this Swanson house is going to be a press reference. I'm going to alt click and they're not only in the planning stage right now, but they are also a press reference for me. So multiple thought tags, I get the nice visual cue or I can hover over those. And here's the last component that I wanted to share with tags. You can actually move thoughts through a process. You know, uh, everything doesn't always stay urgent and important. It gets completed. Maybe it needs to be reviewed in the future. So it's still important, but it's no longer urgent. You need to move it to a new classification. And uh, let's say I've gotten a little bit of work done on the Ravenwood house. I'm no longer planning. I'm moving this into scheduling. I've made some calls, arranged for all my contractors. I'm just gonna right click on this planning thought and replace this tag, replace this tag, not add a tag, replace it with scheduling. So I've moved that from one category to the next. And if I wanna see all the different projects that I'm scheduling, all the different projects I'm reviewing, uh, or actually maintaining, working on these little control icons, I can just go directly to that tag. Let's take a look at all of my control projects. There are currently only two. So I can always go and review all thoughts that fall into a particular category. And when I go to a thought, Again, that link is no longer viewed um, on that uh, on that particular uh, as a link within the Plex. I just get the nice little icon. So tags, just a really really great way to uh, 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 to further classify your information along with thought types when used properly. So now I'm going to jump into that fun AI category. I'm going to go back to my projects. And one of the projects that I'm working on is in a historic district called Bungalow Heaven in Pasadena. So I've got a little before picture of what the house looks like now, what the homeowner sort of envisions their house looking like in the future. As you can see, this is just in planning, but this is a VIP customer because of maybe the amount of money they're spending or what have you. So I classify them in my organization as a VIP and I'm looking into getting this house, you know, and maybe in one of our meetings, we talked about what do we want to accomplish here? Well, we need to improve the kitchen. We need to uh, do all these different things to the house. We want to make it a historic property and get it on the list of historic landmarks. Okay. I've been reviewing and interviewing a couple of different architects, people in the neighborhood, people on the Pasadena Historic Society. I've got this really long note of all the different details and information that people have given me. And it's a lot of information to go through. So now I'm gonna rely on AI. And this is why I'm demoing in the Brain 14 today, because we've brought our AI integration into the version 14 app, desktop app. 
This is just one of the many different AI features that we can do. I've got this really long detailed note. There's a lot of great information in here, but it's gonna take me a long time to go through it all. So I'm gonna let AI create for me an action item list. I wanna stay focused. I wanna know out of all these details, what really needs to get done and keep track of what I've done so far and what hasn't been done yet. So let's let AI extract an action item list for me. And I'm not typing right now, but you can see at the bottom of my screen, AI is reviewing all of that content and saying, all right, well, these are the action items that need to take place, uh, regardless of what the subject matter of, of that note may be. And uh, there you can see it's still going. It's a it's a big note. And now this is another feature I like about the AI. You can review this, you can accept it, you can discard it. There's AI features where you're actually manipulating the text and rearranging it. And you can review those changes and the, the view dropdown. I'm just gonna go ahead and accept these. But as you can see, I need to contact the local preservation organization. There's there's finite things that need to take place. I need to ensure that this property, and I need to be able to prove it, that this hot property is at least 50 years old. Well, we have the original construction plans or what have you. So I can simply check that off the list. Uh, contact local preservation organization. I've done that. They've provided me with some paperwork. So I've completed that task. And I can meticulously go through this one by one until I check all these different options, waiting for the review process. If approved, if approved, preserve the property's historical integrity and so forth. So you got to save that documentation. There's a lot to go through there. I'll be able to keep track of what's been completed, what hasn't been done yet, or what I want to do next. I can even rearrange this list if I want manually to decide what uh, what I'm gonna what's going to take place next. But also, more so than that, I love checklists within the brain because they not only keep you focused, but you can review all incomplete tasks in a checklist, so a checklist item that hasn't been done yet in your entire brain. So let's say, for example, I'll just create another checklist on another house I'm working on. So we're just starting on Fountainhead, and I want to interview the client make a needs versus wants list, uh, talk about the budget, timeline, lot to do. And when something gets completed, again, I can keep my notes here in the brain or in another thought or in this thought, but I can simply check those off the list. So I've got two different thoughts with checklists in this brain. Uh, my own organic brain might forget which thought I made a checklist on, or is everything done on all checklists, on all thoughts in this fairly significant brain, fairly large brain. Let's go into the brain reports. I like to, you can click on um, options, no, view, show report. I like to jump over to the little button right next to the search box. And the uh, reports are broken up into two separate tabs. The first tab, are all of your to-dos. This is a list of all action items that are not complete within your brain. Anything that you've created with a checklist and that doesn't have a check in that box, it's gonna show up in this list. So in a very large brain with a lot of projects that you're working on, this becomes uh, incredibly, incredibly helpful. Uh, you're not relying on your own organic brain to navigate through uh, each individual thought to find those incomplete tasks. The brain is telling you front and center what needs to get done. And I even see I do have another checklist with incomplete items down below on the Villa House. So I can click to navigate to that thought, review those checklists, and I can check things off here in the notes. I can check things off over here in the to-do list. But notice when everything gets checked off, and as you can see, as I'm checking it off, it's updating the notes. If all those tasks are complete, it then no longer appears in my to-do list. So the to-do list, a great tool to utilize, and it all starts with creating those checklists um, in your brain. And checklists behave much the same as bulleted lists or ordered lists. Very, very easy to use and create uh, new checklists and to stay on task uh, by running that to-do list. Over in the reports, I'm just gonna refresh 
Again, this is a sample brain, so I've got a lot of sample content, but as you can see, this brain has about five, does have exactly 575 individual thoughts. I just wanna mention this really quickly because here it is the end of the year. Our topic is all about going into the new year uh, successful and staying focused. You can run reports on your brain and review your data in many different ways. Um, you know, Shelly and I even discussed, we could have the entire webinar today just talking about reviewing data, reviewing content within your brain. So these are all thoughts within my brain, but if I wanna look at all thoughts um, that have been modified, so I'm gonna change the time, uh, modified within the past month. Um, these are all the thoughts where I've been active. I've been over the past month, 50 different thoughts that I've that I've clicked on here. Um, or I can review all of my, I'll go back to any, all of my thoughts of a particular type. Remember all of my people thoughts, doesn't matter what type of person they are. They could be an architect. They could be a plumber. They could be a client and so forth, but all people, I've got 36 people in this particular brain. I have, uh, let's uncheck some of these. So I'll uncheck VIPs. I only have two. So the, my drop down sort of covers up the, the window there. I'll make this a little larger. Uh, so VIPs, I only have two in this brain. So you can have combinations of these different, you know, all VIP thoughts that have modified content within a certain time frame. You can really go in and manipulate this particular brain to, uh, to review your data. One other thing that I really wanted to share with you today, let's go back to uh, just reset everything. These are all my thoughts. I can also review forgotten thoughts. Yeah, um, as you probably know, if you're if you've used the brain or if not, there's a two part process to deleting thoughts. First, you forget them, then you delete them. Uh, so you never it's a safety net, so you don't ever accidentally delete. I can review my brain, and sure enough, I've got two forgotten thoughts. So I can go to that thought. New Orleans architecture that came under uh, this category of surfing the streets of New Orleans when I was planning some architectural tours and so forth. But I felt the need to go ahead and just delete that thought. First, I forgot it and it remains in my forgotten thought list. So now I can right click and I can permanently delete that thought. So it's a great way to review data that you're removing from a brain if you don't feel the need to archive it. Um, you can also review what we call orphan thoughts. I don't have any. An orphan thought is a thought that has been uh, completely uh, disconnected. All of its links have been removed. So it's just sort of floating out there like a satellite within your brain. You're only going to find it if you do a search, but you can run a report to find and discover orphan thoughts in your brain as well. So a lot that you can do with reports to, uh, to scan, review your data. Um, and keep things clean in the new year. You can also do a date range of all thoughts modified and go to the end of that list. What has not been modified within the past year? Um, that's helpful to know as well. Do you still need that information in your brain or can I permanently delete it? And now let's talk about collaborating within a brain. So, so far you've seen Shelly demo a couple of different brains. I've been demoing this sample brain. Um, Shelly and I actually share some different brains. Um, and if I go over to my thought or my brain for my uh, 2023 uh, strong finish, this is the brain that Shelly was demoing earlier. Um, I have access to this brain as well. So this is through what we call team brain. Team brain is a license type. Uh, so you can um, uh, increase your license type to team brain with a small group or a large group and collaborate within the brain. Multiple people working in the same brain database. The brain is syncing in the background. So when Shelly makes changes, I have those. My brain syncs every three to five minutes or I can just click on this sync icon. It says no changes to sync. But I can also click on the little clock icon over on the right and find all recently modified thoughts. So I know Shelly started a new marketing project. When did she start it? I'm going to hover over it. Today at 1.16 p.m., Shelly started uh, or set the thought type on this new marketing project. And you can go to a thought and open up the thought history. So Shelly's been the only one that's been modifying uh, this particular thought. I can actually leave a note on this thought. Shelly, 
I'd like to join you for the first, uh, we'll call it the scoping meeting. We're just scoping out what the project will look like. Scope meeting next week. Sure, so, I'd be happy to have you. <laughs> and I wouldn't need to call Shelly to let her know about this. Um, Shelly, if we're collaborating in a brain, uh, you know, can review all recent changes. Ah, Matt, uh, you know, chimed in on the new marketing meeting or here again with those thought types and tags, Shelly and I can create tags. There you can see is a tag for Cindy. I'm going to create a new tag for Shelly. And I am going to tag this particular thought just to bring it to her attention uh, that she should review that particular thought. That's a really, really key uh, sort of best practice that we share with all of our team brain clients. Create tags for each individual on your team. You can tag thoughts and then it's just a matter of process. You know, when I log in, I look at my Matt tag to find out what all my responsibilities are. People have shared information, tag me on those thoughts. Uh, it saved a, a long team meeting or a phone call or an email and I can review all that content. And again, if I say, if Shelly looks at this, everything looks good, she can replace this tag with, all right, now let's send it over to Cindy and she would see what she thinks about the two of us collaborating on this, this project together. Great use of, uh, of that tag feature. And of course, I shared with you that archiving. If uh, you, know, you wanna move a thought to another location, I actually like in my, many of the brains that I use, um, I actually create a thought called archived hobbies, archived uh, bikes that I've rebuilt or or uh, recipes that I don't use anymore. I put it in my archive. Um, so I've got archives for different types of projects that I use in, in my real brain. Um, you can call that category whenever you want. And that's why I liked the idea of uh, this particular brain instead of just calling it archived projects I've worked on. It's not really archived. It is my portfolio that I'm keeping track of, and I can refer back to that at any time. And once again, you can just create that as a thought or as a thought type to classify something as archived, uh, but it's very easy to set up in any way that, that works best for you. And at any time, oops, let me go back to projects. Um, you know, I complete another project, Boston Garden comes to an end. And I'm going to right click and replace this with, oh no, I didn't create a tag. I created a thought. So that goes right into my portfolio and I right click and unlink it from current active project and it moves over into my portfolio. And then finally, the last component that I want to share with you today is that you can archive entire brains. Um, if for any reason, there's many different reasons why people use this feature. Uh, maybe it's just a safety backup. You want to keep a copy of your brain as it existed in the year 2023. I've got, I've got uh, BR, we call them BRZs, brain archives from, uh, you know, early 2000 and, uh, and so forth. So I can refer back to, to brains that I've created in the past. It's a very simple process. Click on file and backup to brain archive. You can protect your brain archive so that only you can extract it, or you can make it so that anyone can unzip this particular brain. Maybe you've created a brain that you want to share with your client. Maybe you've created a brain that you want to share with a colleague before they decide whether or not they're going to join you in a team brain license group. Um, so you just want to give them a read-only copy of your brain. So there's a few different options to share and click on backup and it backups, backs up the entire brain, all the thoughts, the thought types, the notes, the file attachments and so forth into a single file that you can share with colleagues or just store and, and archive and extract at a later date. So hopefully we've given you some great ideas on how you can jump into this new year prepared organized and ready to take on more. And it's time to jump into our QA, see what uh, what we've missed or what you're interested in learning more. All about. right, great. Yes, a lot of wonderful questions. Um, uh, a lot of them were, were answered um, by Juan or myself, but a lot of them merited a demo huh, as a picture's worth a thousand words, as we know. So I'm gonna kind of start at the top and work my way down. And this is something that maybe I missed it, but a great question from Orlando about, is there a way to set alerts in the brain? So I don't know. Did we cover reminders or like? No, no. we didn't. Yeah, we but we, 
Yeah, you certainly can. Absolutely. Let's say I want to be reminded that, um, you know, if you've got a meeting or let's say I'm going to just go into my contractors, maybe I'm meeting with Betty. Betty's a new photographer uh, that we're hiring for for all of our jobs. And we're going to have a meeting. Um, I'm going to say this meeting is supposed to be on Monday, this past Monday, because I want you to see what the reminders look like. Um, so on any particular thought, you can add an attachment. And instead of just adding a file or a document, I am actually going to create an event. And this is going to be a reminder for me. So when does this event take place? It's going to take place well, this past Monday, the 11th at 2 p.m. And yes, I want my brain to give me a reminder. So there's additional details I can add there. I could add those details, the phone number, or the, the Zoom meeting link, what you're going to have is, can be in the notes. But I'll just go ahead and uh, save this information. And um, I set it up as a reminder. So hopefully you'll see in just a moment, it scans for reminders every uh, two to three minutes. There it is. I've got a reminder that I missed. I'm a few days late on my December 11th meeting with Betty. I can snooze this or I can close this out. If you hit the X, you save the event. So it shows up still here. I'll just snooze it for 10 minutes. Maybe we'll see it pop up again. But you can open up and view all of your reminders in the brain timeline. So I'll click here. There's my brain timeline. So you can use this as your uh, calendar. You can actually sync the brain uh, timeline or or integrate it with your uh, Google Calendar as well. So just click this little button down below. We're getting into some more advanced features, but Google Calendar settings. So you can sync it with Google Calendar and, and events from Google Calendar show up in your brain. Brain events show up in Google Calendar. Uh, it's a lot of fun if you want to synchronize those, uh, those two. But uh, that event will remind me here again in about nine minutes that I'm past due for my meeting with Betty. And then if you have a team brain, you can also set reminders for that. And so if there's a reminder Absolutely. for that brain, your entire team will get that. Yeah. So yeah, the calendar, um, obviously, when we're talking about time management, um, it, it's that, that's a nice little option that you can have on the bottom. It's it's a kind of a new way of looking at your information, time based as well. And uh, what you can do if something is on the calendar is you can click on it, it'll move to that area of of information. So it's almost like having an embedded knowledge base in a calendar. And of course, we know that most people are using Google Calendar and other tools. So that's where um, the, the integration comes in. So it's, yeah. it's, it's really nice, all buttoned up quite nicely. Um, and now we had a question from Kai. Um, he or they wanted to know what the different types of backgrounds are. Um, and this person is interested in having mountains as their background, which I actually Absolutely. love the new year, like for peak performance. So I don't know if you can, you know, you have a nice background on this brand, go to another brand or show us how to. Oh, no, I'll change it in this one. No and problem. And actually, Peter um, was creating a personal photography brand. So maybe changing this brand and also showing how to add some images as a thought icon or images in the brain, a couple of our users on the call today were uh, looking at uh, putting. Fantastic! Some I'll I'll incorporate those all together for okay. uh, for this bit. Uh, I right clicked in the Plex to go to the brain theme. You can also click on options and go down to brain theme. If you're on a Mac, you would click on the brain and go to brain theme. But in the brain theme is where you can really customize the brain uh, to fit your personality or the subject matter of the brain. And it's not just a fun feature. Yes, Shelly and I like to have different wallpapers for different brains. It also serves a very important purpose in that um, you know we can look at our brain list and we know which brain we want to open because we have more than one brain database. That brings up a whole nother discussion, one brain versus many, there's no right or wrong. Uh, but brain wallpapers and color codes can really sort of influence the brain that you're working on, but also help you as well. So first and foremost, yeah, I kind of like this uh, setting. This is a Frank Lloyd Wright that I put in the background. Uh, maybe I really like this setting. I played around with some of the colors. I'm going to save this theme and I'll just call it Frank Lloyd uh, Wright. So I can switch back to this at any time. I can select from one of my different themes. We have themes built into the brain. There's about, I'd say 15 or 20 different themes that you can uh, can select from. 
These are uh, changing the, the wallpaper each theme, or I can go to options and upload, select and upload my own wallpaper. Yeah. And I think that's what also just to let you know, literally, you can just grab an image from Google or, you know, iStock or whatever, and then you literally, you just upload it. You can also copy and paste right off the web and paste as wallpaper as well. You can also, Background. I'm going to create a thought called Mountain with Clouds, and I'm going to press on F4. And F4 is the brain's search feature. You can search through, I've made Bing my default. You can choose any different type of engine or website, what have you, set that up to automatically search from the brain on the cloud. So I'm searching for mountains with clouds. So that's just another feature that opens up here, of course, on another monitor. And we'll go to images. And if we see an image that we like, there it is. I'm just going to right click and copy that image. I've got that on my clipboard. I come into the brain and I right click on the background and I paste wallpaper. Yeah, so, super easy. Ooh, I like yeah, that. I do too. <laughs> that worked out really well. And again, yeah. now I can save this theme. Or if I say, well, I kind of want a blue tones over in my notes, I can just go ahead and click on the little style uh, button note style, and we'll say all of the background of my note, the page that is, is going to be sort of a very light blue. So a we'll blue apply green. that, it's see deep. if we like it. There we go. Might be too happy a color next to the mountain, but we'll let you go on yeah. this one. Yeah. Okay. We'll <laughs> All right. Well, so that's, so that is how you do that, Kai. And then um, back to sort of uh, project management, Gary was asking, um, should, um, should he replicate a structure for each project? So that's a very personal question, but I actually think it is kind of cool. Like whether you're using GTD, David Allen's natural planning model, or you have just three phases, it is really great to have, you know, project start midway completion. And then you actually just name each project individually. You can use the comma trip or thought type. So you don't, well, you don't have to replicate a project methodology for each project. It For consistency purposes, it's not a bad thing to do. That's sort of the whole premise of Sig Sigma and, you know, a lot of these um, time management methodologies. Uh, so that's just you yeah. know, that was just a little in an interesting question coming in from Gary. I don't know if you have anything to add there, Matt. Yeah, you know, I would just add that um, it could be, you know, we show you different examples um, in Shelly's brain. They were actual, what we call a native thought. They were a thought in the plex. In my brain, they were tags. You could make them your thought types, your tags. You can always convert as well. I can right click on any native thought within the brain and say, convert this to a type or a tag. So you created them as thought as thoughts and you decide, well, gosh, I liked how Matt had them as tags. You can change them to a tag and manipulate the brain at any time. And Shelly mentioned the semicolon. If you're just starting with the brain and you say, all right, my classification for projects are quite simply phase one, phase two, and phase three. Okay. I'm going to speed this along and create areas of my brain for phase one, semicolon, phase two and phase three. And you can populate areas of your brain very quickly with that semicolon. And um, then the other trick is yeah. the comma trick. So, cause mm. if you have like 20 projects and you have three phases to each project, you don't want a bunch of duplicate thoughts called phase one, phase two, phase three, but let's yeah. say mountains with the cloud literally is your clandestine project name. You could have mountains with the cloud comma phase one mountains with the cloud comma phase two That's right and then it actually does context sensitive naming this is getting a little bit more into editing but because uh of the question about replicating that methodology across multiple projects that gary asked i think it's kind of worth worth showing this little sure hack. absolutely and i'll just use the example of a commonly used name that's when i like to use the comma is um you know for a thought that is a, a common use name for like it like contact who is my contact when I call uh the doctor's office who is my contact when I call this particular client I always need to speak to Gary or Manfred or whoever it is um so in this case contract I'm gonna have contracts uh sign contracts for all the different jobs that I'm working on so I would end up with dozens of thoughts all called contract I want my mountains with cloud contract. So I hit comma at the beginning of the thought name. You could put it at the end 
And when you create that thought, it appears under the context of mountains with cloud, it appears as just contract, but the full thought name is mountains with cloud contract. So I can use that comma to, it, it uh, adopts the parent name of wherever you're creating that particular thought and appends it onto the thought name. So it saves you a little bit of time, but also gives you greater context. When you run a report, you don't just see dozens of thoughts called contract. They'll have that, uh, that comma trick will clearly identify them and down below in the past thought list as well. Uh, you'll always have a better understanding of what that thought is. Great. And I just want to let you know, for those of you that have to uh, run, we're on the hour. We are going to go another five to 10 minutes um, just to answer. We've got a handful of questions um, that we mentioned uh, to people in the Q&A that we demo, but there is going to be a recording of this session. So uh, if you do have to jump off, you will get emailed that recording. But if you have uh, if you want to stay for another 5, 10, 10 minutes, we're going to continue with Q&A and then wrap up. And also, if you have a question that like you didn't get the answer to, chat it in right now and maybe we'll we'll try and <laughs> get to it but we are going to cut it off in 10 minutes um okay so uh a question that came in earlier uh more of a discussion uh question from peter um he's got the commercial property management company brain but he also is into photography and has personal projects does peter create a brain with everything or do separate brains so this is um obviously a personal choice um yeah. i used to be sort of the subscriber and, and that first brain or the second brain i demoed with sort of the one brain for it all where I'd put my name and then I'd have business and personal. And I guess I, that depends on if you're going to be sharing things. So if you're just maybe the single architect running your own business, then it is kind of cool to have it all together. Um, but that being said, if you're a commercial property management company, you want to do like a team brain with like 10 of your colleagues, then you probably want that brain separate. And then you could have a separate photography brain. I know Matt's more of the separate likes to create separate brains. I kind of like to put it all together. There's really no right or wrong way to do. The only issue that crops up is um, collaboration. It's kind of nice to keep your your business brain separate um, when you're sharing them with people, although That's you right. can use private, but still. Yeah. And in in uh, in that example, you know, if you're ever going to share your brain with your client, so uh, property management, what if the client wants to see see what you've collected, or you want to share this with the client. Hey, we've got some improvements for you. Take a look at how we've outlined that in your brain. You don't want to send them a copy of the brain or sync it to the cloud. And, and you can share a brain online. So even if a person doesn't have the brain installed, they can still navigate through the brain uh, from the web, from the, the brain cloud. And you obviously don't want to shen, send them into a brain that has data and information on other projects that you're managing that doesn't doesn't reference them. So that would be separate, you know, topic specific brains. But it's we cover this in a brain 202 webinar that we handle from our uh, host from time to time, you can always click on file and import and import into an existing brain another BRZ. So you can merge brains together. Or I can really quickly control click on individual thoughts, one thought I can control click and drag. And I'm adding things into my selection box where I can right click, I can copy those thoughts and paste them into another brain, uh, yeah. a new brain that I just created. And that's so great can, yeah. for templates too. Like maybe yeah. in the peak performance brain, you love David Allen, but you don't need my stuff on Alex Osborne or um, Stephen Covey. So you could uh, open that template brain that we're happy to share with you and just copy and paste all the GTD thoughts, put them in your brain and then be on your way. So you can actually merge brains or separate them. Um, so that, that's a kind of a matter of choice. And then John asked earlier on, I use the apps at symbol for my tag for when I'm talking to the CEO. Um, yeah. What is the at symbol for for tags? It quite simply gets you to that thought faster. If you have uh, certain tags, uh, Shelly and I do this for our people tags, we put the at symbol. So at Shelly, at Matt, at Brigitte, you know, any one of our, our different colleagues. And that just simply, I don't think I have them in this brain, but if it's I did. project management though, if you go to new more, oh, I, I think it's in that you know, one. 
could be wrong. So if I just type in the at symbol in the search window, there we go. Yeah, there it, we are. It brings me directly to, to those that grouping of thoughts. So put an at symbol in front of all of your people, put an exclamation point in front of all of your urgent projects, um, you know, some, some type of special character just to get you to that thought faster. With That's just search. if you have like a ton of tags, um, yeah. you know, I only do that for a few. I actually kind of don't use it anymore, but some people love it. So I, I, I kind of keep yeah. it in there as a little demo. And, and I'm like you, I, I just did it for tags. I never did it on a thought, but just on a tag. That at symbol is probably what started. I think you started that process and it just works. Yeah. <laughs> so and, I still use it. And then I guess a follow-up question from Kanisha is, is there a way to see all completed projects? So this is where your thought typing tags can come into. So you could tag something completed, but for me, and actually Matt, if you stay in the part, oh, sure. or you can do either brain, um, you can click on, if you go into my thought types. Um, uh, first of all, if you want to see something that is all completed. You do need to e use the metadata to, 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 to convey that state in your brain. So whenever a thought or a project is completed, I like to type type it. Now, a lot of you are asking, what's the difference between a type and a tag? Matt did cover it. A type, yeah. you get the full color on that thought and icon. So visually, types are pretty cool because you can see them right away. Tags are almost like data fields. You can have multiple tags, um, but they appear kind of to the side. So because completing a project represents such a huge milestone, I like to have it as a thought type. And then what I do is I just click on that thought type completed projects, and then they'll all pull up regardless of where they are. So you don't have to have one thought with like 250 children under it. You can just create that thought type. So it really helps yeah. in your structure. But that being said, my methodology, you might want to create a tag for completed rather than a thought type. Um, so there's many ways to slice the pie. Um, no necessarily right or wrong answer. I don't know if Matt, you have any other. No, uh, you're examples. exactly right. There's no right or wrong, whether it's a, a thought. Like I think I when I talked about that, I talked about just creating a thought called archive. Here's my archive projects. And when it's done, you move it over as a child thought there and 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 that's where it exists within your brain. Um, but I also like the, uh, either tags or types for, I think in my example, I called them, um, I used the tag, um, but I also then move it to another area of my brain called portfolio. So this, these are closed out. So the Sears is, is a closed out project. Uh, and it's also just in my portfolio area. So like sort of a, a mixture of both in that scenario. Yeah. And I actually like a lessons learned uh, area in my brain, like, and that's mm -hmm. not every single completed project, but some of the ones where there was a lot, we grew a lot as a team or as an individual. Um, I, uh, we work with a lot of military and government clients. I love that. They have a lot of lesson learned thoughts in, in their uh, team brains. And it's, it's a great area as well. Um, so that's another kind of little area that what uh, I think is is worth having. And uh, I think with that, we have covered everything, all the questions. Uh, Juan, was there anything else? I think we got most of them. Yeah, that was pretty I, much it. Okay, Great, great. I did see one that came up uh, about the comma trick. What if the thought is already there? So if you're just learning about the comma trick, let me just share with you really quickly. Again, I used that example of a contract. So let's say I already had contract and then I realize, oh, I could have used the comma trick. So I don't have the word contract appearing over and over and over again, just manually type it in. I'm going to alt click and this is my, I can put it before or after Sears house comma contract. So the, uh, uh, con the comma trick still works. Uh, but you just need to manually add in the parent name that you're looking to adhere to the full thought name in that case. All right. And I think with that, we have completed, we can mark this webinar as a completed project. Um, thank you uh, for all of you who asked uh, all the great questions. And uh, for those of you who have stayed right till the end of the Q&A, uh, uh, thanks again. Um, there will be a recording of this. And if you want to join um, the 101 class this Friday, um, that's a little bit more basic where we create a brain from ground up. With this particular webinar, we were really focused on 
you know, a brain that you have and, and getting into task management and goal setting mode here. Um, but if this is, if you're a new user, I highly recommend the one-on-one -on -one classes. Um, and you can also, also use them just to ask any questions and your question will get demoed because it's a smaller class size as well. That's right. And yeah, you can sign up for that at thebrain.com. There's a link to sign up for 101. We welcome uh, any and all of you to uh, to join us for a 101. And next week, there's a special holiday themed right. 101 on Thursday. So sign up for that one uh, for just some, uh, some holiday fun in a Brain 101 class as well. All right. Well, I wish you all well from task to finish, um, your year end success. And uh, I hope to see you again on a future Brain Technologies event. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.